All right, so we've been looking at Taylor polynomials and we've looked at a number of examples which have suggested that going beyond the linear approximation for your function at a given point C to higher order polynomial approximations gives you better results over a wider range of values, right? So remember that our Taylor polynomial, right, looks like f of a plus f prime of a, or sorry, c, we're doing c for our interval, times x minus c, there's the linear approximation, right, um, plus these higher order terms, right, which all come by taking higher and higher order derivatives, evaluating at that point c, we divide by this factorial, and we multiply by the corresponding power of x minus c, okay? And we've seen that there are some functions like, for example, trigonometric functions where these Taylor polynomials actually approximate very well um, over a fairly wide range of values. There are other functions like a natural logarithm where these don't work as well as you might like, right? Over a small range of interval, uh, small range of values, not too bad, uh, but there's always a point where you move just a little bit further away and, and suddenly the approximation is terrible and it doesn't matter how many terms you add to your Taylor polynomial, it doesn't really seem to improve all that much. Okay, so what, the next step here is, is once you've established your approximation, you wanna know how good your approximation is, right? Um, and, and keep in mind that you might be doing this in some scenario where you don't necessarily know how to compute the function exactly, right? Um, because we have graphing calculators and computers and things that give us quite precise values for these functions, we sort of uh, sometimes fail to appreciate why something like Taylor's theorem is useful. Taylor's theorem is useful because you might be in a scenario where you don't actually know how to compute the function precisely, but you can compute Taylor polynomials. Right? Um, or, or some other kind of approximation for your function. And, and let's say you want to know the value of your function accurate up to, let's say, six decimal places, because that's what you're going to display. Well, then you need to be able to figure out how many terms do you need to put in your polynomial to give the value accurate to six decimal places at a particular point, right? So at a particular value of x, how big does n have to be before I know I've got six decimal places, right? Um, so you might need to solve these problems. Taylor's theorem gives you one means of doing so, okay? Um, so Taylor's theorem says that as long as you've got enough continuous derivatives, right? So if you want to use a degree n Taylor polynomial, um, you need this derivative, but you also need the next one, okay? You need n plus one continuous derivatives. Um, as long as you've got enough continuous derivatives, you can write your function as the Taylor polynomial plus a remainder. Right? So notice it's equals here. It's not an approximation, it's equals. Right? This remainder, right, this should be thought of here as sort of your error term. Right? It's telling you, you know, the difference. Right? If I move this, if I subtract that over, it's giving you the difference between the original function and the Taylor polynomial. Right? So typically what we're interested in here is we're interested in actually the absolute value of this remainder, right? And, and often at a particular point where we're, where we're evaluating things. Um, and so if you're looking at this, you realize that, okay, well, this is just a constant. I don't need to worry about that, right? Um, there, there is, there's a couple of things here that you have to watch out for. Um, well, I mean, you have this term, but actually this, it's, it's not as, as, as difficult to deal with as you might think because for whatever problem you're doing with, you've chosen C in advance, right? You choose the point where you're centering your Taylor polynomial. And now we're trying to decide for a given X, how good is our approximation? So we've chosen our X. Uh, the only other wild card here is this T, right? Um, now, this particular remainder here, this is what's called the Lagrange uh, form of the remainder. Uh, it's one of, actually, there, there's like, often three different forms that you find for this remainder, three different remainder formulas. Um, the first one is, is derived using sort of integration arguments and it's quite tricky to get to, but once you have that first one, 
Then there are sort of mean value theorem arguments that you can make to arrive at simpler remainder formulas. And so this t here, all we know about t is that it's in this interval that we're working on. Actually, you can, you can say a little bit more. Um, it's, it's between, if you want to narrow it down, it's between x and c. It's somewhere in between those two values, right? Um, but typical mean value theorem argument, you know that this number exists but you don't know what it is, right? All you know that it exists, you know roughly where it's located, but you don't know it exactly. So <clears throat> what you're doing with Taylor's theorem is you're not trying to compute this error, this remainder term exactly, because of course if you could do it exactly, you would know the exact value. That's not the point. Uh, the point is to get some measure of how big this thing can get, right? When you're dealing with error, when you're trying to estimate error, right, you want a maximum error, you want an upper bound, right? So you want to be able to say, look, um, I know that my answer is off by a certain amount, and I know that that amount can't be any bigger than this, right? If it turns out that your error is actually less than what you budgeted for, nobody's going to complain, right? You did better than you, than, than you advertised, right? You're only going to be in trouble if you advertise that you can do things within a certain error, and then it turns out that you're, you're much higher than that. Then you're going to get yourself in trouble. So, Typically what you want to do here is you want to look for what is the biggest value that I can get for this function. And we want to look, I guess, at absolute value, right? Absolute value of this derivative, okay? And we take that absolute value, you know, over this interval i. We divide by n plus 1 factorial, and we multiply by the absolute value of x minus c taken to the n plus first power, right? So there's a few things that you realize with this. One is that if, if x is fairly close to c, and in particular if the difference between x and c is less than 1, then this is going to get smaller as n gets bigger, right? So just being within 1 of the center of your polynomial is, is going to give you some control over this remainder, right? So staying within a distance of 1 is going to work. That's why we saw with like the natural logarithm, um, as, long, as long as you know, we did the log, natural log, we did the Taylor polynomial centered at 1. And between 0 and 2, we did OK. But once we went past 2, once that difference was bigger than 1, we had a really bad estimate. It wasn't good anymore, OK? Because as soon as this difference is bigger than 1, it's going to start growing with n, right? Of course, it's not going to grow as fast as this factorial. So what you're looking for is you're looking for, you know, making sure that overall this thing is getting smaller as n gets bigger. And indeed, it, it will, right? For pretty much any reasonably behaved function, it's going to get smaller as n gets bigger, right? If you're, if you're looking at this in the context of sequences and series, right, um, your Taylor series is going to have some radius of convergence, and as long as you stay within that radius, you know that this remainder is going to go to zero as n goes to infinity. Um, okay, but if you're just working with polynomials, you're doing polynomial approximations, then you don't care that it's going to eventually go to infinity, right? Like if, if, it, if you have to go out to like, you know, billions or trillions before you start getting a small enough value, that's not very practical if you're using this to approximate functions, right? You want to know that by the time you get to like n equals 10 or 20, this remainder is small enough, right? You, you want things to get small relatively quickly. Otherwise, you might be relying on a lot more computational power than you want. Okay? So we're going to see how this formula is used in the next few videos. So we'll do a couple of examples. Um, and then we're going to move on to the next topic.